And today we have a message for Minister Phil Twyford, New Zealand's Minister for Disarmament and Arms Control. Greetings from across the ditch in Canberra. Good day, everyone. Warm greetings, Honorable Phil. Hello, Minister Twyford and everyone else who's able to attend this event in person. Although I'm happy to be able to send words by video, I'd much rather be with you all in beautiful and progressive New Zealand. We could really do with New Zealand's help here. It would make all the difference. I'd like to congratulate New Zealand and particularly the New Zealand government for your continuing proactive approach to disarmament and arms control. It's very exciting that you all have a Minister for Disarmament and Arms Control. We all know that the country is no stranger to taking a strong lead on disarmament and building on its legacy of protest over nuclear weapons and New Zealand's subsequent work to ban landmines and cluster bombs. The efforts that your ministry is bringing to humanitarian disarmament, in particular the process to develop a national policy on killer robots, is an encouraging development, not only for New Zealand, but for all of us in the civil society, and particularly those of us in the Global South, which would probably be the first and worst affected countries by these weapons. They originated really from when the US, um, all their forces in the early 2000s, began talking about autonomy as a way of restoring their military advantage over everyone else. But of course, immediately there was a new arms race beginning with the US, Russia, China, Israel, Turkey, South Korea, Australia and the UK, among others really hell-bent on trying to develop these as quickly as they can. The minority of countries and companies believe that developing autonomous weapons, which would select and engage targets without meaningful human control, are acceptable and a good use of technology. Lethal autonomous weapon systems have the ability to remove humans from the decision loop, thereby allowing machines or robots to make decisions of life and death. This is a scary but a very real proposition that raises the need for arms control to a new and I believe unprecedented level. Now I'm not talking here about some sort of fancy sci-fi terminator. Military thoughts have been evolving. Now the big thing is force multiplication. Nation states are developing swarms of tanks, ships, submarines and small armed drones. The idea, of course, is so that one person or a small team can unleash massive, massive force. What is this going to do for global security? Imagine the accidental wars that could be created. And it would also be much easier to go to war if you're not putting your forces out there. I was really shocked because I could not see at the time how these could possibly, how anybody could guarantee compliance with international humanitarian law, the laws of war. Human beings must always be accountable for the use of force because machines or robots cannot be held accountable. It has no moral agency. It really doesn't understand anything about humans or humanity. No empathy, no sympathy and certainly no moral responsibility to do the right thing. And as a black person, as an African, one of the issues that was of major concern to me was that not only will killer robots be used in the context of armed conflict, but that they will be also used in the context of law enforcement. And when that happens, people of color and other minorities are disproportionately affected. The discussion on killer robots have been occurring in the UNCCW for almost a decade now. 
And of course, there are achievements which can be noted over these past years. Yet, it has become so clear, at least to me, that the UNCCW may not necessarily be the appropriate forum. More than 5,000 AI researchers, including the leaders in the field and other scientists, have written to the UN and big AI companies saying these are not fit for purpose. AI is not good for war. It cannot be trusted in that sort of way. And it's quite unpredictable. It is very difficult, if not impossible, for states to reach a, to reach a consensus on the governance of killer robots in the UNCCW. The review conference of the CCW will take place later this year and after so many years of discussion we need countries to take a clear decision for a negotiating mandate. It is time for a new plan, a new process and a new venue where serious talks on these weapons can actually take place. Mr. Minister, I read with great interest your speech of July 19 outlining your thinking about how to deal with killer robots. As you rightly pointed out, discussions in the CCW on these unconscionable weapons are on a road to nowhere. As you have pointed out, there are options other than the CCW. You called on fellow states to join New Zealand in designing a policy response that is fit for purpose. It is important for states like New Zealand and other like-minded states to start seriously thinking about options of how to negotiate a legally binding instrument outside the framework of the UNCCW. A number of countries are sitting in the fence, because, especially European countries, because they don't want to annoy America and Russia. They want to keep them in there, but they're never going to convince them. It would really help if we had a great peace nation like New Zealand to help knock some of these people off the fence. Voices from various governments are raising minister in all continents, and the commitment of New Zealand could certainly make a huge difference in bringing them together to ensure that no machine will ever take a decision over life and death. When one state shows political will that is attuned to what is for the common good and what is right, it inspires other states to also contribute to make things happen. I ask you to give us some hope in these rather dark times of pandemic. Deciding on the future of autonomous weapon systems is like deciding what problems of mine and the children of today will face in our future, when it is our time to lead. Come together and negotiate binding treaty to stop killer robots. Thank you so much for all your efforts in this regard.